Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 403. So over 400 now, over a year's worth, and there's still stuff to talk about. Amazing. So today's topic is, it came up as I was sitting with what I want to say today, is compassion, a powerful key or a key to successful singlehood. And I want to explain that a bit more in detail because I'm realizing more and more that for many singles, many people who are single, there's a level of frustration and also a level of, um, well, I won't say self-flagellation, but certainly not a positive experience of being single because they're judging themselves based upon their friends who are in a relationship and also because they're not having success because their swiping effect, swiping, swiping success rate is minimal. And frankly, I believe that's a good thing. So um, let me get into this, shall we? Or let's get into this, shall we? For some fun. So first of all, the comparison between single life and couple, couplehood or coupling. There are um, plenty of relationships out there that are pretty, pretty on the outside, but ugly on the inside, if you know what I mean. So being single and judging yourself because you're not in a relationship, when you look at your friends who are in a relationship, you don't know what happens behind closed doors. So your perspective on you're jealous because you're not like, like their relationship, you might want to be thankful because they may have a very cold, disconnected, dysfunctional, abusive, um, alcoholic relationship. You don't know. Because what happens behind closed doors for many relationships is different from what's on the outside. You rarely see out in the world how people are behind closed doors. That's just the way life is. Some people are transparent, and those are wonderful people who basically show themselves as they are no matter where they are. I don't think I'm one of those. <laughs> But it's not that common. So that's one, th that's part, part, that's one part. Second part, um, the rush to be in a relationship and the judgment of self because you're not in a relationship is a self-abusive jail. It's a trap you put yourself into because of something you've been told by other people. None of us, I believe, self-generated the idea that we must be in a relationship to be whole. Actually, I'll get into that one in a second, too. That is two parts in that one. Hmm, it's going to be interesting. We're basically imprinted by what other people tell us. So that lie that we're telling ourselves isn't ours in the first place, but we take it on and then we punish ourselves because we are not succeeding at being in a couple. We are actually single and something wrong with us. Not true. So let me back up on those two things I mentioned. One thing in one part of that, to give you more understanding and and components of this discussion is the dance that we have where um, we feel that we're not complete. It's a delusional perspective and again I'm there's a lot about how we are wiring ourselves and being wired to believe lies about ourselves which is insane. So one part of this is that being um, incomplete is a lie. Who you are, who I am, who we all are, are whole human beings. So being single doesn't make you any less than anybody else. In fact, in some ways it makes you better because when you're single, you tend to have to be more autonomous. That's a benefit, by the way. In a relationship, t people tend to drop into a codependent model, and I've talked about codependency before, but they drop into this codependent model where they rely upon the other person for certain things that they would normally do themselves. Being single makes you stronger and give you more autonomy to be independent, which are actually good skills to have. I'm not saying you shouldn't be in a relationship, but when you come into a relationship, don't give those things up so easily. They'll actually be, 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 they'll actually be powerful vehicles, tools, and skills to carry into a relationship because it makes you less dependent upon the other person, makes them feel less put upon, and makes the relationship more contributory by both partners, especially if both partners do the same thing. That's a whole codependent, independent conversation I had before, but I don't think I'll be getting to that one here. There was another piece that I saw flash by when I was talking about the upbringing we have, the, the belief that we are incomplete somehow, is 
Let me see. Is it, let me just check. Just check if I'm getting the language in right because I've got three, four things showing up at once in front of me to talk about. So let's go with this. One of those things is that we get caught up in the paradigm because a lot of us have parents who either been married forever or who haven't been married forever. I mean, it's obviously one or the other. And for those of us who have parents who are married for a lifetime, which my parents were, there's a lot of pressure on us that we have to do something similar, which is one of the challenges. When you come from a, quote, broken home, to hate using that term, but you come from a, a paradigm where your parents were divorced, there may be some part of you that is wired up to see if you can change that paradigm. So in some ways, if you have, a, if you have parents that were married forever, that's an almost, well, for me it was, let me be honest, an, an, um, an impossible dream to match up to. For me, that wasn't the path I was going to follow, and that's reality. Um, there's enough on that one. Moving across the other one for a second, I'm just watching what's coming through. Being in a being a child of divorced parents, there can be an unconscious drive to somehow repair the damage by what happened to them to not do it yourself. And of course, as I said before in other broadcasts, the wiring we get when we're young from our parents puts us in the paradigm where we tend to repeat the patterns we learn when we're kids. That's just part of the journey. So if you're trying to repair the, the family lineage, that paradigm, that because your parents were divorced, you don't want that to happen to you, so you want to get married and have a long-term relationship, that's also pressure. So these are all pressure points that make being single challenging. And truth be told, uh, some of our best life experience can happen when we're single because we're unattached in a good way as well as being in a place of freedom. And I'm not speaking against relationships, I'm just speaking for pro-single. So let's be clear, I'm not speaking because I'm pro, being pro one way, I'm against the other one, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'll add a PS the other way around in a moment, so bear with me. So being single, with all these pressures upon us, both internal and external, and having all these apps and sites and ways saying, I'll help you get fixed up, and of course, you know, I have a pro and contract the man you want, so I'm in the same boat of, of offering you services to help you get there. It can feel like a lot of pressure. And the reality is, it's okay to be single. So the whole point about compassion that I mentioned in the title is that it's kind of like, give yourself a break. If you're single, it's okay. If you're single, there's nothing wrong with you. If you're single, you can enjoy a lot of your freedoms and your way of experiencing life and be, com be uh, compassionate with yourself and caring about yourself. Simply being appreciative of who you are, one, will give you a lot more relief and relaxation. Two, will actually make you more attractive because you're being joy-filled in yourself and actually appreciating who you are, which makes you more magnetic to relationship. How counterintuitive is that? <laughs> and thirdly, you'll start taking the pressure off of all these other things that have been put upon you for so much. And you don't need that. Because one of the challenges of being single is there can be a desperation to be in a relationship, which is one of the most unattractive qualities for dating there is, just so you know. So when you're carrying this burden of need to have and you don't have and you feel left out and you're feeling driven by you want to have all these different changes, you're putting yourself in a place where being in a relationship is going to be even harder because your attractability or your, your attractiveness, attractability, your attractiveness to other people is diminished. So having compassion for yourself, having caring, concern, and love for yourself when you're single is actually one of those things that makes you more attractive. Surprise, surprise. So, oh, sorry, I just saw two different parts if you want to go with this one. One of those is, let's see, having compassion for yourself makes you more attractive, as I mentioned. So if you're looking to be in a relationship, start with that first. So that's a secret weapon, by the way. It's a, it's a secret superpower. <laughs> to be compassionate with yourself and caring for yourself makes you more attractive to other people. I didn't really think of that before I started this, but now I have, so here you go. These things happen. <laughs> Second part as well is that when you stay in that place of compassion for yourself, when you meet somebody, you're not in a hurry. You're not desperate to get in a relationship, which again, are these traits that don't make you attractive. You'll be willing to check things out, and then when you do get into a relationship, if you maintain that level of compassion for yourself, you'll be easier in a relationship too because you won't be so um, driven to try and be perfect or be special or be unique other than just being who you really are. Again, transparency, as I mentioned earlier, is a powerful skill when you're single or in a relationship because it makes you more authentic, more real, and more in integrity. And all those things combined with compassion 
will make you a whole lot more desirable as a partner, at least in my book you would be, and I hope other people see that too. And secondly, that partner has to step up to your level, which means you, you, you demand without demanding a better quality of relationship. Not just anybody, but somebody special. I just had a song go through my head from the past. That was a flashback. Was it a Queen song? I think so. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> you can hear sometimes it's crazy in here, in a good way. So anyway, so to wrap this up and to give you some pointers, if you're feeling the pressure of being single and all the people around you are in a relationship, you might want to change your circle of friends for the time being. Find people around who you know, who you already know, who are actually single. Or be around couples who don't keep sticking it in your face, because that's the other part too, by the way. Some people in a relationship like to flash their relationship status in your face. They're not fun to be around. Because the truth is, those people probably have one of the least um, healthy relationships as well. And I won't give that one this time. Well, we'll see. Um, but the truth is that the more you're around people who are authentic and natural themselves, if they're in a relationship or not, it would be better for you to be sustaining yourself because you won't have this pressure on you. And you will also be loved for who you are by these people. Both people are couples, people are single. And that's a healthier way to live life. So your relationship status, being single, is actually a place to celebrate and a place to recognize that it's okay. You know, we were born single, just in case you hadn't forgotten that. And it's not a bad thing. We don't come out of the womb looking for a partner. <laughs> just to think about that for a second. So this pressure is being put on by society. It's okay if you're not in a relationship at this moment. I'm not saying you should never be in a relationship because you know my work is about helping you attract a relationship. So I'm not talking about that, but the reality is if you're spending some time being, being single, it's okay. It's not like, I, I understand, sorry, there's another piece come in. I understand for women, particularly the late 30s, with the clock ticking, the number of eggs and everything else, there's a whole, there's a whole desire for children that comes up. But excusing that piece, because that's a piece I'm not speaking to at this moment, and I don't want to put that on the table because that's a different discussion that could go way deep. I don't know what I'm before, I believe. But bearing in mind before and after that period of time, and for men especially during that time as well, there's a place where we can be more compassionate with ourselves. And by the way, this is true for men and for women. It's not just women about being compassionate. Guys, we deserve compassion for ourselves as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm standing up for that for men as well, to be respectful of ourselves, to be appreciative of ourselves being single. Because there is a drive in them, and I talked about this yesterday, the toxic macho, that's one of the broadcasts, by the way, about how the drive in us is to, you know, to get laid, to meet women, to date them, and to keep going, because that's the that's the hunter aspect that's that's gotten um, um, convoluted and derailed. So, being comfortable being single as a man is not always easy because society doesn't look at us that way as being okay. Something about being a lone wolf is there's something wrong with us, or being a lone wolf, lone wolf is excluded or extra um, extradited. Um, it's communicated, that's the word I'm looking for. But it's not true. So being comfortable with who you are, being comfortable as a man or a woman and having compassion for yourself as a single person, again, is a powerful way to be attractive to a relationship and a powerful way to live your life so you're not needy of a relationship. Two powerful ways to live. So I hope this makes sense to you. And skipping back to what I said earlier about helping you attract a relationship, because I've got to let you know, if you're in a place where you are looking for a relationship, and you're hopefully getting more comfortable being single at the same time, as I mentioned in this broadcast, I do offer a complimentary clarity conversation as my gift to you, which is a 30 minute chat between me and you where I can help you get where you want to go. That is something that, if you're not doing what I've already said in this broadcast, I will remind you of in that conversation. But if you're willing to risk that, <laughs> if you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, and you click on the Let's Chat uh, menu choice on the left, you can sign up for a discovery session there. Um, this broadcast is con considerably. What's I'm looking for? This broadcast is a is a is part of a considerable growing um, library, over 400 broadcasts now, of talks about love and relationships. And if you want to find out more about these, you can watch them. In fact, replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author. Also, my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby is the is the channel. Message from the masculine is the playlist. And if you want to listen to them in audio format, I'm slowly rolling these out on my uh, podcast, because I now have a podcast on iTunes called Messages for the Masculine, where you can sign up and get my audio, so when you're driving, you can listen to me talk too. How's that? 
and also because the podcast you listen to them in sequence or actually listen to them um, con contiguously versus having to hit play each time full service support what can I say I'm one of you my, my insights and support is my gift and all these are free of course um, if you want to help you know find me if you have any questions about this broadcast please put them in the comments below I'll answer when I sign off if you know anybody should, if you know anybody should watch this please share it with them of course and it's time I gave some homework I didn't give homework the last few days here's some homework for you um, I imagine that there's room in your life for more compassion so here's your homework if you don't know what compassion is, look it up and then apply it to yourself. I would just, just uh, my definition of compassion is gentle, loving self care, which also includes signs of forgiveness, appreciation, um, unconditional support, stuff like that as well. But that's the idea of what compassion is. And I would say that you've got room to give more to yourself than you already have because we're all human and stuff happens to us. So your homework is to give yourself some compassion. Simple as that. And remember that you're human. Remember that you're deserving. Remember you're worthy. Remember that you are in fact a shining light in the world. And sometimes people who are shining lights attract darkness and other crap that is really annoying. So be compassionate with yourself if you're not doing things perfectly. That's your homework. I know it'll help you. It helps me. With that, I will say um, that's about it. I will see you again tomorrow with another broadcast. That'll be 4 04. And uh, yeah, being single is okay. Have compassion for yourself. You deserve it. I'll see you again tomorrow.